Hey YouTube, it's another quick one here, hopefully anyway, it's a surge protector, this is a surge protector. The reason this all kicked off, my parents had a lightning near their house, knocked the route route and I had to uh, get it going again. And luckily it had failover and dual WAN, so I managed to get that going pretty easily. But then I thought, oh, I'd better check my surge protectors. This one is probably about 10 years old. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up and change the mobs in it. And I'll show you quickly sort of my idea of how these work. I'm not an electronics or electrical expert, uh, but I'll show you quickly the ins and outs of changing this particular one. Okay, so luckily this one has screws, although they're tri-wing. Uh, there's eight screws. So there you can see inside it, that's the um, sort of surge and the switch part of it. And then you've just got three bars, one's for earth, one's for live, one's for neutral. And the little shutters that cover the, the switch um, when you put the, the earth in. The reason I'm repairing this is it's a good one and I'll show you why. Uh, I think it's a good one. I'm not an expert on these things, but I think it's worth saving. It's got a gas discharge tube. A lot of the other ones don't have that. They just have three moths. Um, between the live, the earth and the neutral and the idea of a mov, which are these things is they're kind of like sacrificial um, <clears throat> sacrificial over voltage protection or over current protection even if there's a surge that comes down the line which can either be lightning nearby or can be like even running a motor in the house it induces or can induce spikes back into the line which if you're running stuff like computers can cause issues so I'm just taking the board out there's nothing scary in here there's no ballast caps or anything to worry about and just lift that out and we should get the whole thing out okay so this is what we've got we've got a board here um, that's the switch uh, these two red things they're the mobs underneath and they're the reason they've got that uh, shrink wrap on them or heat wrap or shrink what is it called heat shrink on them is because they're next to a thermal fuse so there's a thermal fuse there, heat shrink to the MOV. So they've got MOV here, the thermal fuse, heat shrink to it. And the reason for that is that these things can fail in a fairly catastrophic way. And if they do, they get hot. So the idea is if they get hot, they'll burn the thermal fuse. And the thermal fuse will disappear and cut the circuit before it can get too hot. So you can see here, you've got live earth and neutral, or line I should say, earth and, earth and neutral coming in. With switch you've got LED for power or well, actually it's a neon I think I'm not sure whether this neon's gone you can see how black it is in there the reason I took this apart is because the neon doesn't light up on the surge and it's supposed to show you if the surge is actually surge protection is actually working this here is gas discharge tube so that takes the whack what it I think it's like a fluorescent bulb almost if the voltage gets so high it can jump across that gas and go down the earth but it takes a while to react, which is why you've got these two sort of faster active moths. So this one can take a real beating, and these two take a slightly less of a beating. And the thing with these is, they've got a certain life, these moths, so they can either take like one big whack, or they can take, you know, a few years worth of small whacks, but they do have a limited life. So if you've got a surge protector, it's worth, you know, either changing the whole thing or changing the moths. Um, because there's no real indication whether the mob's failed, other than if it fails catastrophically and it'll blow the fuse. But if it just sort of wears down over time, then you haven't really got a surge protector, all you've got is dumb power strip. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this, uh, uh, what would you call it, uh, heat shrink off. And I'm just going to literally put these new two mobs on, heat shrink it, and be very careful not to overheat the fuse when I solder it. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert, but I've sort of looked at the circuit board and I think this is how it works. It's got the line, earth and neutral, going for a coupled switch, so it breaks both the line and the neutral. Earth goes straight away through. After the switch, it goes off to this power strip on the line and the neutral, so even if the surge stuff fails, it will still work as a dumb power strip. The only clue you'll have is that the light won't light up. I haven't included the light because it's just too complicated for me. But the, after the switch... Um, we go for a thermal fuse, that thing I showed you sandwiched to the MOV on each of the line and the neutral. They're then coupled together at the end and then there's gas discharge tube between them and the earth, all the way back to the earth. So I presume how it's working is a spike on the line goes through the gas discharge tube, a spike on the neutral goes through the gas discharge tube, a spike on the line could also go back 
through the neutral. That is the extent of my knowledge. Let's get on with it. That's the fuse. Sorry, that's the fuse. It's sandwiched up against the mov. So all I'm going to do is just cut the mov out. And the mov's got it written on the side what it is. And you can see there, it's got 14. I can't read it through the camera. Let's see if we can read it. 14D391K. And what that means is it's a 14mm diameter. And then the 391K is like a number that tells you the peak voltage it will take, uh, the joules, which is the amount of damage it can take before it fails. Just look up the data sheet. So you've got two with their own thermal fuse. You can check the thermal fuse. You can see the fuse is going from there to there. So we should have continuity from there to there, which we do. And we should have continuity from there to there. Yeah, there to there, which we do. Just gonna just basically hope you can see that on there. You can do this with, uh, I don't want to stay on there too long. That just fell out, so that's done. So, just to make sure, I'm gonna do like for like. 14 9, 14D319K. It's going in here where the holes are. Get that nice and flush up to the fuse there. And then just bend the legs that way, bend the leg a little bit that way. And not blow the thermal fuse. This is where I spoil it, being a total perfectionist. It, that one doesn't look fantastic. There, I'm going to let it go there. But I've heat shrinked them, and they're pretty tight there. I don't want to go over the top because I don't want to blow the thermal fuse. But at the same time, I want them to work. So the thermal fuse is working there. And the thermal fuse is working there. The other thing I'm not sure about is this blue neon it's pretty black to me I mean this one works this is the orange one the blue one doesn't work now whether the blue one doesn't work because the surge protection wasn't working or whether the blue one doesn't work because the bulbs burn out we'll soon find out I'm also going to just write down this discharge tube and see whether they're cheap I might replace that another time but that is the mobs done so I can see from that that's got live written on it, and that's the live. The brown to the brown to the live, so I know that the live is on that side. The live is this side, the neutral is that side, the earth is at the top. I have seen these with the plastic, with the papers got the wrong orientation, so don't trust that. Trust the real plug that you know is the right way round. So there we are, all back together. And I don't want that going across the anything so I'm just going to tuck that out of the way we're going to fall out again let's just there we go lifted it up made sure no wires were pinched and like there's no silly things like the line wasn't crossing across the earth or anything silly like that all done Still didn't get my blue light back, but I think that's the neon gone. And obviously, if I take one end and plug it into the other end, then uh, absolutely nothing happens. Of course it doesn't. But uh, that is now been updated. Lots changed. Should go on for a while. Stays out of the landfill. Looks like a decent unit. Probably not really worth screwing around with, but I like to screw around with stuff like that. So thanks for watching. See you all later. Take care and goodbye.